Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Q&A on CYC. Following on from our last Q&A covering Are You OK? We're going into a series to talk about mental health and some aspects on that regard. Tonight, we have a very good session for you on the 21st century epidemic of loneliness. And with us tonight on our panel, we are joined by Father Salib Salib, who before becoming a priest recently, spent 22 years working with the New South Wales State Government on child protection and mental health, and is also currently studying a PhD on therapies around mental health. Welcome, Abuna. Thank you. Appreciate it. And also we're joined by Paul Hanna. Paul has just finished his medical degree and is currently working or studying at the Theological College and a very active youth servant in our church. Welcome, Paul. Thank you so much. So before we get into the loneliness, we're just going to cover a short video. Please stay tuned. There is a loneliness epidemic in the UK. 45% of people admit to feeling lonely at least some of the time, and one in eight adults report having no close friends. Loneliness can affect anyone at any time. Often, it's triggered by a life event, retirement, divorce, illness, or even losing a loved one. But even seemingly positive events, like having a baby, moving home, or starting a new job, can leave you feeling lonely. But what is loneliness? As deeply social animals, most of us will feel the need to be around other people on a daily basis, and if we don't, we can risk feeling isolated. But it's possible to feel lonely even when we're surrounded by a room full of other people, or we have a thousand or so friends on social media. Because it's not just about solitude, it's about our perception of belonging and having meaningful relationships with other people. Having a small number of strong social bonds is much more important than having a large number of superficial friendships. Loneliness can take a huge toll on our mental health, increasing risk of anxiety and depression. And because persistent loneliness can increase our levels of stress hormones and lead to overeating, it can have an impact on our cardiovascular function and immune system. In fact, research has shown that loneliness can be more damaging than obesity or smoking, increasing our likelihood of early death by around 26%. Just a reminder to the audience that this is a live show, so please send your questions to text on number 0416551292 or feel, feel, feel free to call and we'll ask our lovely panel. So Buna, just on to the first question, can you please talk a bit about the types of loneliness? Okay, um, loneliness is it's a very important um, topic for the moment with our community and society. And I believe it is a lack of connections, lack of communications between people, and someone who's been alone, um, maybe someone cut off from others, okay? And I can also look at it from the point of someone is feeling sad. Mm. And some people also, they feel like they have a pain inside them. 
okay, they feel uncomfortable. So it's all about someone is sitting somewhere alone and have no communication with the community or with the people around them. Okay. Um, there are many types of loneliness, but I believe the most and the very important ones is um, the emotional loneliness. Emotional loneliness is about someone who um, lost someone and that's why they feel alone. Like death of a friend, death of a relative, or uh, some friends moved, uh, you know, you used to live with them and they moved somewhere else, okay? So that's what we call it the, uh, the emotional loneliness. The second type of loneliness, it is the social loneliness, okay? Social loneliness is about um, you have um, absent from the social, you know, the network around you. And that's maybe because you have moved somewhere else or um, uh, there was some sort of issues and you decide not to um, communicate or to deal with these people, okay? Um, there is another type of loneliness which is um, within the crowd, the people they feel they are alone. Mm -hmm. And this is very dangerous. You know why? Because you look at them and they are very normal. Within the community, they are very normal, but there is no connection or there is no physical connection between them and the community. And the reason possibly may be previous abuse, okay? Or maybe a previous experience, okay? Which made them to cut from people. Um, or they don't know how to communicate with people, okay? Or there is an incident has happened and that's impacting on them. Like for example, I, I, I remember when I was studying uh, my master and that was really, really a um, uh, time when I felt lonely. And the concern was, I was studying one of those subjects and I couldn't figure out how can I do it. Even though there are a lot of people around me, they helped me, but still feeling alone. So I decided to withdraw from the course. And then I left work, went to, to uni, and uh, at that day, I said to myself, I won't be able to do that um, presentation, leave the course. Since I walked in, I found my colleagues inside uni, and they said, how did you go? I said, oh, I won't be able to do it. They said, why? And I said, I don't know. I feel, I feel very frustrated. I feel depressed. And what's the problem? I said, I don't know. So someone jumped in and he said, don't worry, we will look after you. We will take care of you. And then you found your friends, they started to help you. And instead of us you know, thinking to withdraw or stop the course, I found a lot of people around me, a lot of people encouraged me. And since I started my presentation, I found a lot of help and support from the people or from my colleagues. Here you go. Mm -hmm. This is very, very important, a very, very simple example. You are in the community, but you are not connected or you feel depressed. Mm -hmm. Okay. The role of the people around us, it is very important role to help us to get out of that shell. All right. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with all of that. I think that's Brilliant, that's, that's wonderful. Um, I would define loneliness yeah, as an emptiness. Mm. Um, and it occurs when we don't have meaningful connection. And that might be because we're un unable, as Father described, or don't want to, or maybe don't know how, whatever the case may be. Mm. Um, I think there's another kind of element to it in which we may um, mistrust people. Mm. We may feel that there's nowhere where we can really um, be ourselves without judgment. Um, there's a sense in which it's always going to be conditional or it's, it's false or it's fake. Um, I think with the rise of social media, our interactions with people tend to be quite superficial. Uh, yes. And so we're more connected in terms of frequency, but the depth is lacking. Um, so we don't have that, that, that kind of meaningful connection. And because of the busyness of life, which is only increasing with time, um, we don't ever sort of stop 
um, and really connect with someone and drop everything so that we can really listen to them as well and kind of yes. uh, have, have that connection. And so I think um, loneliness is quite common, as you mentioned, and as the video showed, and uh, is something that is, is seen commonly, yeah. Do you think the busyness of life itself is a major contributor? And as you were just pointing out, mm. that we tend to spend shorter bits of time rather than quality yeah. time, and, and maybe the understanding of how to even manage that so that people feel that you can communicate and you can really make the connection. So I suppose you do need a, a good solid time. It's not just a quick SMS or a quick call. Yeah, certainly having lived in a larger city as Sydney and um, in, in a quieter um, city as, as Adelaide, I've seen the difference between um, kind of social norms. Uh, in the big city, people are rushing from event to event and uh, it's not uncommon to cancel on someone because there's something mm. else going on. Uh, and as a result, you kind of see people by chance. That's what it ends up being. It, mm. It's not, uh, you know, a, a sustained effort to see someone, to develop a relationship with them because you want that person in your life. It's more, well, we're kind of in the same social circles, so I'm, I'll probably see you at this event. Um, and, and the problem is kind of competing priorities. Mm. Um, I want to go to this and also this, and I want to see this person. Um, and you end up doing neither of those things very well. Whereas I think it's crucially important to say, no, I'm going to set up this amount of time. You don't need to have many friends in your life, just meaningful ones. Uh, I'm going to set up this level of time, this amount of time, and I'm going to do nothing else but spend it with you. Um, I'm going to hopefully leave my phone on the side <laughs> unless it's urgent and really pay attention to you. Yes. And that's how we connect with people when we listen to them and pay attention to them. Yeah. You think that happens a lot within our youth these days, especially with the uh, iPhone and i <laughs> technology and selfies and how can they maintain that on a, you know, their profile, I guess, their uh, technological profile with the person-to-person -person profile and maybe is the mm. priority not quite right there? Yes, yeah, so you bring up potentially another issue um, that we're not always our real selves with other people. Mm. Um, the online persona is often not what's in the heart. Mm. Um, you know, we're encouraged to smile or pout and, you know, pose mm. in a particular way to get, you know, the maximum number of likes on Instagram um, with the right filters. And, and as a result, we may feel afraid to show ourselves to people. Yeah. Uh, and I think that also can be a, a cause of loneliness, I'm sure Abuna would agree. Uh, and the, the idea would be that we're, there's not enough of us in any one kind of at any one point to connect with a person. Yeah. You know, there's too many layers um, of, you know, putting up maybe a front in order to appear a certain way to the world because that's kind of what social media does. It makes us focus on maybe the superficial. Yeah. yeah, rather than making the actual connection with a person. Rather than it being raw, just person to person, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. So, Paul, can you tell us about, about who experiences loneliness? Sure. In terms of covering ages or yeah. dynamics yeah. or cultures. Yeah. Um, so when you speak about loneliness, people mm. tend to think that you're talking about maybe the elderly. Mm. Um, but actually, I think it's an issue that is existential. It's it's a human issue, mm. and we'll talk more about that as I think as we as we or I, I'll say a few things later on. But um, I think everyone experiences loneliness. Uh, I think as the technology is um, increasing, as we've said, it's becoming more of an issue. Um, I think all age groups, I think it doesn't matter where you live per se, uh, everyone experiences it because I think it's, it's a, human, a human thing. Yeah, mm. yeah. I guess maybe I will add also uh, within the family now, mm. uh, the relationship between parents and the children uh, became not that strong enough because of, again, of the social media. Mm. And if the parents, uh, to make sure they spend the quality time with their children. So it's not about controlling the social media, but it's about, you know, um, like to make sure we're not feeling on that trap as a family unit. And the parents to make sure the children using the, uh, um, yeah, you know, the stuff in appropriate way. And that's because sometimes you feel yeah. like, you know, around maybe six, seven o'clock afternoon or at night, the people, everyone in their rooms, you know, mm -hmm. talking to each other. They are busy with their mm -hmm. social media stuff. Guys, what's happening? Yeah. Where is our life as a family unit? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the parents' role here is very important to encourage, yeah. encourage and support the, their children as a family unit to get together, talk about healthy stuff, 
Yes. Pray together. Mm. Read the Bible together. Okay. And that mm. will reduce the um, feeling of loneliness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, I've you know, also read that we experience loneliness even from a baby yeah. because we go through those times. So experiencing loneliness in short bursts um, is very normal. But I guess the problem occurs when we're having it on a prolonged period. Mm. And then once we get into a habit and then the more we experience it, the more we actually feel it, the more we become lonely and are in that environment. Would you say that that's, that covers it quite a, a bit in terms of, um, you know, the, the, we saw on the video that all the men mental, emotional, physical effects and damages of loneliness, and it comes from prolonged periods of loneliness. Would you think that um, that's rightly so? And how would we then bring it back to, because you were saying with the parents, they need to be responsible for the, you know, what happens in the family. And yes, they do. But also then our teen teenagers are very much into all of the technology and we get very absorbed in that. And then mm. it maybe becomes a habit. Mm. I, I think it's definitely an, an issue. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's true. Mm. And the more you leave it, and the more will have an impact on the relationships between people. Yeah. Not necessarily in the family only, mm. but yeah. also in the community, in the mm. society. Yes. And we need to attack that. Yes. And I believe if you look at it from a professional point of view, and instead of we concerning and putting focus on those type of things, let's get the youth and get people mm -hmm. to do a lot of healthy activity. And I believe within the churches, we start to do some healthy activities mm -hmm. with, the ch with, with, with youth, encourage them to do some activities on Friday nights and to, to get together and to uh, communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. This is healthy stuff. And instead of like sitting in your room, playing with this type of, I, 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 I'm sorry to say it, inappropriate, mm -hmm. inappropriate stuff, but <clears throat> let's get together. Mm. Let's let's communicate with each other. Okay. Let's do activities and activities. It's healthy activities. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Audience, please just a reminder that we're here to take your questions. If you can call or text on zero four one six double five one two nine two. Now let's have a talk about the causes of loneliness. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> causes of loneliness. I think one of the most important cause is about your feel, your, your, your self-esteem. And I can see from my experience, low self-esteem is, um, is one of the main causes. Um, you come and talk to this person and you say, you know, I'm not happy with myself. I feel like, you know, I'm not normal. I feel like I am not the same as others, okay? I feel like um, I'm talking to a girl, you know, I'm, I'm not pretty, like, how do you know? I will ask them, how do you know? Okay, did you ask someone or someone told you their opinion? No, and the concern is we are sitting up there, we're feeling lonely and we have no support and stuff. Go and talk to people, go and ask people. If they have this idea, all right, you will be able to deal with it. But yes. not sitting up there and feeling, you know, I have, no. And one of the good things I was um, dealing with clients before I become a priest, okay, um, encouraging them, helping them, supporting them, and give them some homework in a daily basis to encourage them. A few days later, you find a different person, okay. So go as a person who feel lonely and talk to people. Don't assume the people's ideas, mm. okay? So when if I'm an introvert and feel I don't have those skills or I don't have the confidence to go out to a group or to a church, even a church youth group or, um, you know, do an activity, how do I overcome that? What do I need to do to be able to just make that first step to get myself out into the public or with friends to do that? I guess very important thing as a church, as community, we need to knock on people's doors. That's the first thing. To make sure we're covering everyone. And that's through visitations, phone calls, and stuff. Okay? The other thing is, you as a person who's suffering from loneliness, okay, you need to take an extra step. I need to add here the um, comfort zone. Comfort zone, we love to 
be relaxed, don't move. And that's one of the main issues also or causes of um, loneliness. If you sit up there with your comfort zone or in your comfort zone, you won't be able to achieve nothing. Mm. So let's take the first step. Move out, go out and talk to people. Otherwise, no one would know what's happening up there. Mm. And the other thing also, family members and community. If you know someone or if you feel someone up there sitting alone, okay, let's go and tap on their shoulders and knock on their doors. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Paul, would you like to add anything to that? Um, on introversion, I would just say you have to, as Abuna said, you have to get out there, really. Mm. Um, you have to take a risk. Pick something that's lower risk. Um, you know, pick a nice uh, social gathering where it's relatively easy to, to chat to people and just, you know, take, take a chance. I'm sure it won't be as bad as you think. Yeah. Mm. And I suppose that going back to your point, Paul, where you were saying it's important to have a few good friends and make connections with a few friends so that you feel comfortable and even then they can lead you to their groups or so forth. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Buna, some other maybe yeah, causes? Uh, maybe some people, they will fear fears from other people. Mm. Many reasons. Maybe they have bad experience. Maybe they have some, um, like, um, I'm sorry to say, previous abuse and stuff. Mm. And they're building walls around themselves. So instead of building some bridges with other people, we're building mm. walls. And they're not knowing what's happening outside. And that's really concerning. Mm. Yeah. And that will make to be isolate and, hey, what's happening? Mm. Okay, I need to start to that bridge. I need to go to people and talk to people. Yeah. I know it's very hard. And the first step is the hardest step. Yes. Why? Because people, they feel sometimes afraid. They feel shame sometimes. But we have to move. Yeah. We have to go out. Yes. And as I said, bring that wall and put it down in a stair of a wall. We make it like a bridge. Mm. And that bridge will connect us with, with other people. Yeah. So, Paul, um, what about if we've tried to go out and we've encountered hostility from someone? And I imagine that's going to dent our confidence even more. How do we bounce back from that? And how can people in, the, in our community or within our groups mm. help? Yeah, so usually there's some kind of previous issue. Mm. Um, usually there's an issue with previous mm. relationships. Mm. That's why the person is unable to connect in the first place. Um, and that puts them in a bind because they might be afraid to, you know, get out there. They probably have baggage from whatever it is they experienced. Uh, generally, there's some kind of trauma, it might have been a rejection. Um, one of the things that counsellors do, I'm sure Bono will agree, is they provide a stable relationship, a kind of a bedrock in order to, um, to go out from there and, uh, you know, to kind of figure out a few things that they otherwise were unable to do um, in social settings. So what we can do perhaps is befriend people yes. um, and provide for them a stable, non-judgmental relationship um, as Christ often did with the rejects. Mm. You know, that's not a, not a pretty word, but the rejects of society. But that's just to say that people who do not fit the social mold, not having any less value. Yes. Um, and that's super important because um, they've been judged, ch chances are, what, for whatever reason, by someone. Uh, and we have to approach them with love. It doesn't matter. You know, if they don't, if they talk a certain way, if they act a certain way, we have to approach them in a non-judgmental sense. And I think that that can be um, quite helpful. Yes. Yeah. That sounds wonderful because uh, I could imagine that it would be, it would just increase with the loneliness if you don't have that ability or people come around you. Yeah. And we even see it in schools now. They have special places where people, their children can sit if they're feeling lonely and other children will know to go up and ask them, are you... You know, do you have someone to play with? Do you have a friend? So I guess in the adult world, how do we do that? And maybe even in our church groups, because we tend to feel more comfortable when we're in our groups that we're familiar with. And sometimes I guess we're, we're fearful of approaching new people mm. because we don't know them. We don't know where they've come from. They yeah. might look very different to us. So mm. on the other side of it, how can we make a person feel more welcome to break that barrier of loneliness? Mm. Well, at the end of the day, everyone's human. They've got their likes, they've got their dislikes, yeah. you know, they've got opinions about things. Um, and it doesn't matter if you agree with them or if you particularly like them. We're not called to like people in our faith. We're called to love them, which is very different. Um, and love is a choice. So, you know, we, we, people approach you at a youth meeting and they introduce themselves and, um, you know, get to know you and just 
make you feel part of the group, invite them to, um, to the social gatherings, you know, whatever it is that, that might be happening with the youth at the time. Um, I think these are some of the things that I've seen done. Uh, I know that if I've gone to a foreign, uh, say, parish or community and someone's done that for me, it's been nice, it's been helpful. Um, and sometimes you go somewhere and no one talks to you and, you know, you just don't really, like, you know, you don't know where to go from there, obviously. You make your own kind of um, connections and there's no issue. Um, I think at every maybe parish there'll be a few talented persons who will be really good at that, you know, the more extroverted people who will be really good at wel welcoming people. So in a way it's a service that I guess those people can take on. Yeah, very yeah. beautiful service too. Yeah, I think so. And especially when they're people from with outside our Egyptian community. You know, we're having yeah. a now a very big multicultural community. Um, and that's really, really important because these people are dealing with a different culture, a different language, a very different uh, even church and look. So mm. that, that is very, very important, I have to say, even coming from myself being a uh, Maltese background, not ha being Egyptian, that was really, really wonderful for me. I had people came up to me and asked me, how are you, can I help you? So it's, it's wonderful. And we have a question from one of the viewers from the audience, so if I could just read that question out to you. How can the church community recognise those who are lonely even though they may be surrounded by people. How can we reach out to them as a church community? Mm, that's, that's a big question. Do one of you want to go first? <laughs> I, I think um, by regular visitations yep. from the church to the congregation, which is a very important point. Mm. That's very, the other thing is home or community to communicate with the church. Mm. Like someone has got problems, okay, let's go and acknowledge or contact the church and ask the church for some help. Mm. And we won't be able to know unless someone come and tell us about it, mm -hmm. isn't it? Or the person who is suffering to, I know, sometimes it's very hard to pick up the phone and say, I've got a problem, yeah. okay, or I need help. So people around and the church we need to act appropriately, I would say appropriately, or say maybe sometimes professionally go and reach to those people who need help. I think that's a very important point. Yeah. And also when we reach to those people, should we be reaching out to them uh, in an effort to try and bring them to the church or just initially to just let them know that you're here for them, make them welcome, befriend them, and then move to the church side of things? I, I, I agree with that point. Okay, the Lord Jesus Christ is very um, sensitive. The Lord Jesus Christ is very awesome and sweet. Okay, we'll go there and we'll say, we are here to support and help. There is no desire, there is no reason. Okay, we are here to support, we are here to look after you. Mm -hmm. We are here to take care of you. And then after that, since you start a good relationship with them, they will come to church themselves. Or they start a good relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is not about for them to come to church, but we are there to support and help them. And then I guess they would see Christ through us I mean, in our actions that will, yeah. God willing, eventually bring them to church. Yeah. Mm. So Paul, there's a question to you. To me, okay. To you, Dr. Paul. How do you think the key concern issues can be dealt with from a medical perspective? The key issues regarding loneliness from a medical perspective. Um, okay, well... That's, again, very broad. Strictly speaking, it would not be medical. It might be either psychiatric or psychological, to be mm. absolutely technical. Mm. Um, in terms of psychology, we've discussed some of those factors already. Um, you know, perception is massive. If I have my own, uh, if I don't think that I'm worthy of a friendship, I won't go and seek one. Uh, alternative, alternatively, if I don't have the skills to seek one, I won't, I won't be able to have one either. Um, there are, of course, particular psychiatric issues that, you know, isolate people. Um, if a person has depression or anxiety formally diagnosed, that's a whole mm. new ball game, and then they need, you know, medical help. Um, and counselling can help and can add to medications in that case. Um, it, it always ends up being, you know, how do I understand relationships, I think. Mm. Um, there's, there's the added layer that we don't talk about much of, um, you know, just illness. Uh, I guess that would be the medical component if you wanted to discuss it that way. But I, I kind of alluded to the fact that, you know, elderly people feel lonely. Um, 
the West is individualistic in its culture. It places mm. a great emphasis on personal freedom, but the cost of that is the relationships that we have. Uh, so family units are not as strong yeah. here uh, versus the East, where everyone sticks closer together, whether you like it or not kind of thing, to your detriment mm. or your benefit. That's just how it is. Yeah. Um, so you find a lot of people, they've reached a certain age, and they just don't really have a relationship with their, uh, with their family, with their extended family. Um, they may not know their cousins. They may not even know their own children that well. Yeah. Uh, and so having illness, being in a um, retirement village or being hospitalized adds a whole other layer of loneliness where there may not be very much to do. I've, you know, I've been to these places, I'm sure many people have, but if you spend a day there, you'll see there's not much to do. It's very easy to be bored and then as a result to be lonely. Uh, and, that, and that creates another issue. Uh, and there are probably some other rare medical use cases, such as someone needing dialysis where that kind of just impinges upon your, your ability to actually see people. Uh, you have to, you know, be next to the machine for a few hours every day or a few times a week. Uh, in that case, that would contribute to loneliness. So medical illness certainly can, and that's different to um, psychological or psychiatric cases. Yeah. yeah. So Paul, can I ask, at what point should we reach out for medical or psychological help? Is it, at what point? Okay. Or is it a period of, by which we feel lonely? Maybe it's a few weeks, a few months. Mm. At what point do we say, I really think I need to seek professional help now? It definitely depends on the, the reason for the loneliness. You know, what's, what's the fundamental cause? Um, as Abuna said, if it's uh, something objective in the sense that, you know, there's no one around me, well, there's mm. not really much I can do in that, in that mm. sense. Um, but if I'm surrounded by a lot of people and I feel really shy, I don't know how to speak, um, then I might consider getting some help. As I said, if you have very clearly, um, you've got depression, you know, and there's a, a number of symptoms, negative thoughts, um, lack of motivation, uh, you know, you're losing interest in things, see your GP if you, if you think you might have it, mm -hmm. um, anxiety, things like worry, things like, um, you know, sweating, uh, racing thoughts, and there's, again, there's a long list of symptoms, then you might need to seek uh, medical help um, and of course, there are some other rare cases where it's more obvious, like um, psychotic illnesses, but I don't think they're really worth discussing in this context. Sure. So just before we go to a commercial break, we have one more question for you, Dr. Paul. You're very popular tonight. Uh, do you believe in natural remedies to treat loneliness? Uh, well, it really depends uh, what you mean by natural remedies. Uh, I mm. think I, th I think I know who sent the question in. I'm just uh, thinking through. Um, I think it's probably referring to homeopathy. Um, okay. All psychological illnesses are, are rather uh, complex. Um, we know, for example, that exercise is as good as antidepressants, um, and or, you know, which is nearly the same as as well psychological counselling. So the question always is, how do you treat these things? Mm. Um, and and I'm talking about psychological illnesses. Loneliness is a bigger issue than that, I think. Um, so as for natural remedies, I don't know what you mean. If you're talking about, you know, using, say, St. John's wort for depression and anxiety, yes, you can use that. Um, but uh, I'm not, it, it depends what they yeah. mean by natural. Um, exercise, again, is a natural remedy. Yes, it's, it's, yeah. it's a good treatment for depression and anxiety, mm. but mm. yeah. It's, I'm not and, sure. and I think even adding to that, it, eating very well, it's very important. Yeah, diet's part of it as well. Getting sleep, um, Abuna, I'm sure you would have found that, you know, even the people that you were dealing with before, yeah. because it's just like a vicious cycle. Once one drops out, mm -hmm. the others continue. Mm -hmm. I might so, well add also to that, if you seek a, um, a professional help that will be able to find out the reason for loneliness and to deal with it. Yes. Like there are some different ways in dealing with loneliness and relationships. And... <clears throat> Yeah, like uh, normally we give our clients or the people we're dealing with some homework and then ask them to work through it yeah. for some time. And that will improve their ability and their skills yeah. and relationships. Mm. And to be honest, uh, there, there are, you know, there are a, a, a lot of stuff can be done and uh, yeah, people can, can get help and support. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. Yeah. We're just going to go to a quick break audience. We'll see you straight after and please keep sending those questions. CYC Christian Youth Channel. Welcome back, audience. We have a really great question coming up next. So the question is: Can marriage cure loneliness? Mm. Would you like to go first? 
No sure problem. you both have a great perspective on it. <laughs> yeah, I guess, um, as we maybe mentioned at the beginning, okay, some people will feel even lonely within the crowd. Yeah. Okay, so it's not necessarily the relationship or marriage will solve the problems. Mm -hmm. No. If we have a good connection or good communication or understanding each other, that will solve the problem. But it's not necessarily normal marriage with no communication, with no, with no blessed from the Lord. No, it's not going to work. Mm. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, the reason, uh, this is such an important question, and the reason I think is because that's what most people tend to think. Yeah. Um, it's the most socially acceptable answer to loneliness, I'll just get married. But I think it can be incredibly dangerous, yeah. because I think there is something within every human being that even a marriage cannot fulfill. Um, the, a particular author I like reading says that marriages are even ruined, because people go into them expecting the other person to fulfill their loneliness completely. And mm. when they don't, because they cannot, um, it places an un, you know, unfillable burden upon the, on, upon the partner. It's, it's unfair. Mm. Um, and so I think marriages, they do. They do um, feel loneliness to an extent, obviously with everything that Abuna mentioned, if it's the right way. But I still think there's something a bit deeper that even marriage cannot fulfill. Yeah. So on that topic, uh, can we talk a bit more about what will fulfill that loneliness then? Mm. If, a, if a person to person or a marriage, something as intimate as a marriage can't fulfill that loneliness, what can? Mm. Mm. So there is a loneliness within every person's heart that I'm convinced cannot be filled by anything except Jesus Christ, except God. Um, that's by experience. I think everyone uh, maybe knows that in theory, but until you've tasted it, uh, you don't quite believe it. Um, when we draw near to Christ in prayer, in a genuine relationship, uh, we feel, you know, full and wholesome. Mm -hmm. And we see this experience in the saints, um, that they just prayed a lot. And, and it can be a kind of a bit of a, of a you know, a theoretical issue. Like, it doesn't make sense. How can prayer... Um, you know, draw me near to God and make me feel full. Um, but St. Isaac the Syrian says that the only way to draw near to God is just to pray more. Mm -hmm. So if I pray more, uh, genuinely, and if I draw near to God, then things created within me that no one else can feel, um, as St. Augustine says, our hearts are restless and they will not find rest until they find it in you. Um, we can find a little bit of that. We can find a little bit of that. And so we have to constantly call to our minds the presence of God and speak to Him with tenderness and know that He's near to us. Uh, and I think nothing else on earth can, can feel that. Uh, as C.S. Lewis says, if I find that nothing on earth can fulfill me, it must mean that I was created for another world. Yes. Um, and we can feel that world on earth, I think. Hmm. Yeah. I guess that this is very important from the spiritual point of view. And um, I, I look at my relationship with the Lord. Mm. And the relationship with the Lord, it's like, um, I, I believe it's like a tube. And that we, tube between me and the Lord, I am praying and my prayers goes to the Lord. And I get messages through the Bible. But if that tube has any thing on it to stop my relationship with the Lord, that will have a big impact. Why? Because I, I, I maybe I will need to mention this. Um, how clean that tube between me and the Lord. And that we will be able, my, my prayers to reach to the Lord and my Lord's words comes to me. So what those deaths is my sins mm -hmm. or my desires or my addiction or, or, or. So... Mm -hmm. The person to clean up those desires and those problems and those issues will be able to communicate and to have a close relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Okay, And now will be able to communicate, be able to talk, or be able to pray. The Lord Jesus Christ is also one of those sinners. But again, to be closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, I think it's very important to clean that to you mm. between us and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I agree wholeheartedly. I'll just say one last thing, sorry, to mm. let you move on. Um, Abu Namat al-Maskin has this beautiful uh, saying. He says, if you want your prayer to be answered, 
ask God to reveal the sins that are keeping you from Him. Yes. Thank you. And it, it always works. It always <laughs> works. If you actually pray that, it always works. Thank you. Yeah. And can I just add one more thing to that as yeah. well? Um, in terms of us then growing that connection with mm. our Lord Jesus Christ, of course, prayer is essential. Mm. But I guess when we're comparing it similar to a relationship with a person, we chat, we talk with them, which mm. is very important, which is the prayer. But how do we get that other connection? Do we still need to do things like spend time, spend time alone with that person, give them quality time? And how do we make that connection? Yeah, um, yeah that's, that's a brilliant question. Um, and it's one that we don't often ask. We often talk at God, but how mm. often do we listen? Uh, and the language of God is not a spoken language, but it's the language of silence. Mm -hmm. Um, God always speaks in this still, small voice. Uh, and to do that, we need to quieten ourselves down first. And that's difficult in a noisy age in which there are lots of distractions. We're uncomfortable with even having a moment by ourselves. Um, Metropolitan Anthony Bloom, he says that some people, they're like a wood shaving curved upon itself. And it's empty on the inside. Mm -hmm. and we, don't, we don't ever stop to fill it with God. Um, mm -hmm. And the way that we do that is... Through silence, through silence. And he, his suggestion is to intentionally leave every distraction and say, here I am now with the Lord and see what happens and, and stay there and see what happens. It's the beginning. Apuni, did you want to add to that before I yeah, ask my I next guess, question? Uh, one of the main causes of loneliness is hostility. Mm. And that's because of the world around us. Mm. People angry, people, you know, fighting and causing a lot of problems and stuff. Mm. You won't be able to find the Lord Jesus Christ within that atmosphere. Yes. The Lord Jesus Christ in there when you are quiet, when we will be able to educate and learn how to sit a bit still with the Lord Jesus Christ to hear the Lord's voice, as you said, which yeah. is very, very important. So we need to deal with these issues like angry, like, um, you know, um, there's a lot of other stuff like um, people are fighting, shouting, and, and mm. okay, we need to deal with those stuff to be able to hear the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is actually perfect going on to our next question. Thank you, viewers, for all these questions. They are absolutely awesome. The question is, if you feel lonely due to a broken family relationships, but those relationships are toxic when you are in them, what should a person do? Mm. Mm. And I think it's quite a common Scenario. Yeah. 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 It's tough. I, yeah. What do you think? It's really tough. Yes. It's it's heartbreaking to hear about it because yeah. it's it's common as well. Um, it's it's upsetting um, because we depend on our families. Our families mm. are the bedrock for our relationships. Psychologists tell us that our early um, you know parental uh, experiences shape our relationships in the future. So it's it's tough when that's an issue. Um, th there's always something you can do. Mm. Okay, you're not necessarily to blame for what's going on in your family, but there's always something you can do. Maybe, you know, there's a, a clinical psychologist, he says, start by cleaning your room. You know, it sounds simple, but the idea is you start getting your life in order and see what you can do. And of course, try and make relationships outside. I think that's, that's not unreasonable. Yeah. Um, but there's always something you can do, even though it might be very difficult and challenging. And of course, if it's endangering your life in any sense if there's abuse then just get out there's nothing you can do about that yes yeah. so in terms of understanding what to do because i know i believe there are so many things mm. how important is a confession father in that because in speaking from personal experience mm. i've found mm. that a very safe place mm. to run yeah. or whether it's not a confession father but mm. someone mm. that you can trust mm. that you can go to to say this is what i'm feeling this is what i'm happening mm. and the reason why uh, Personally, I think the Confession Father is good because they're not just looking on a physical mm. level, a worldly level, but they can help with spiritual level to give that added level of healing and I guess a sense that what we're doing is the right thing because I think in those situations we can tend to react to what's happening and right, rightfully so because it's a horrible situation to be in. Yeah. So how important is a trusted person and a spiritual father in those relationships? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I guess it's very important for us to have a bit of a change in our life, as you said, Paul. Mm. Okay, and I need to move out of my comfort zone. Right? And instead of just only sitting there and this very toxic relationship and uh, the people around the family, they are very negative and stuff, okay? 
let's change, let's make some changes, mm -hmm. let's go out, yeah. right? And then let's liaise with the community, let's liaise with the confession father, mm -hmm. right? And that will put some, some, some sort of like ideas, okay, to move around this family. And as you said, there is something can be done. And if I believe if the confession father stepped in or some professional people step in in that family, um, toxic relationship stuff will be able to figure out who is the reason and what's happening and stuff. Mm. Okay, I think the relationship between among the family is also very important and who is controlling and who is looking after what to be able to work on it. Very simple stuff can be done in a huge and a huge problem can be sorted out in in a very simple in a very mm -hmm. simple way. So I think moving out your comfort zone, the church to visit, and also go and seek help from professionals mm -hmm. that would be important. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I like uh, the saying of a particular psychologist, Jordan mm -hmm. Peterson: get your own house in order mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. So. Whatever it is you can improve in your own life, do it. If that is limited to your own room, as a metaphor, mm. of course, for, your, for the limit of your own life, start there. Mm. Somehow, some way, when we improve our own lives, things around us get better as well. Yeah. Yeah. So take that responsibility. Yeah. 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 So how I've read that the loneliness is a painful state of mind. Mm. So how important is it for us to understand that um, we can control what we are doing, but we can't necessarily control what other people are doing or change what other people are doing, which then goes back to the question about marriage, about this toxic family. Mm. How important is that for us to move on out of the loneliness mm. sphere? Mm. I guess I need to start by myself. Mm. If there is a problem and you acknowledge that problem, we will be able to deal with it. Mm. If there is a problem and not able or not acknowledge, we won't be able to treat. So that's the first step okay. and it's a very, very important step. Mm. So we will be able to move on. I start by myself and then look at my weakness, look at my problems. And then sometimes if I look at my weakness and the feeling that other people, they have problems, let's do what I'm supposed to do first or what I can do first to solve the problem. Mm. I think that would be one of the main issues within the family or within the stuff. So yeah. that's, that, that can solve the problem. So let's start by ourselves, okay? okay? Let's start by us. Yeah. Again, there is a great beauty found in, in prayer um, mm. and in regular prayer. And the church provides us so many tools to do that. We don't have to kind of stand up and, and find words all the time. We have um, the Egbeya, we have, you know, which has been given to us to give us the words and we don't have them ourselves. It's not, yeah. it's not a restriction, it's actually um, a guide, it's, it, it, it's a help. Um, and I, I say that because if we feel that security within us, between me and Christ, mm -hmm. then everything changes. Yes. I don't depend on people in the same way. Mm -hmm. I'm a lot more independent because mm -hmm. the Lord is with me no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if I have that state, if I get to that state, then I can deal with... Um, you know, my, my relationships struggling. And I think as a result, those relationships will improve as well because I'll be able to love people a lot better mm. and that will help them as well. Yeah. Okay, and so while we're on that point, how about we talk about some of the Bible giants who experienced mm. loneliness? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, my, my mind turns immediately to Christ. I mean, of course, mm. all of the the big characters experience loneliness. Um, yeah. I, I wanna, perhaps can expound on them, but I, I just think of Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm. sweating drops of blood. Who was, you know, his disciples are, are falling asleep, and they're, they're not kind of with him in his pain. Which mm. is again a commentary on, on what loneliness is. That there are people nearby, but they're not with me in my struggles, or they're not feeling what I'm feeling. Sure. Mm. Um, and so Christ says to them, you know, why aren't you kind of um, staying up and praying? Um, and of course, he was abandoned by everyone. Um, mm. when, he was, uh, when he was going to be crucified. And mm. we can only imagine what that would have felt like, given mm. that he'd done nothing wrong. You know? Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. And in, in that, the importance of God's presence with mm. us. Yes. Yeah. Um, to, f to fulfill that loneliness or to help us to get through. Of course, in Christ, you know, was always one with God. He is God. Mm. So for us, that presence of God in our lives... Uh, can that fill the loneliness? Mm. Yeah. 
I can maybe bring some examples like um, um, our fathers, Abraham, mm. when he left their place. And you can imagine within his community has left and the Lord told him, leave your community, leave your people and go yeah. away. All right. Yeah. And feeling lonely, but I have the most appropriate person in the world. The Lord mm. is with me. The Lord is carrying me. Yes. Jacob had done the same thing, escaped from his family, was alone, alone. And the Lord was there. Mm -hmm. The Lord appeared to him. And here you go. When he found the Lord, he held on to the Lord. I said, mm -hmm. I'm not the let, let go. Mm -hmm. But again, they've never been alone because the Lord always there. Joseph. Joseph was a stranger in Egypt by himself mm -hmm. with no support. Okay. But he was with the Lord, and the Lord was with him. Mm. Okay, so we've got a lot of a lot of examples. Elijah, Elijah felt like he was alone. Mm. Mm. Okay, but the Lord is very close. The Lord is very. These people they gave the opportunity to the Lord to enter their life. Yes, and it's exactly now the Lord is knocking on your door. Mm. Okay, you are not alone. Okay, but if you give the Lord the opportunity to come to your life, okay, and to stay in your life, here is the blessing. So it's, it's within us then to make the decision. And one thing I would, uh, I've read a beautiful book about Pope Carillos. And he, so he's a modern day person who only passed away in 1971. So yep. not, not long ago at all. And I recall reading that his most treasured days were the days in a windmill, mm. all on his own. Yep. And some, you know, I'm sure a lot of us would say, how could that be? He's in the desert. There are animals all around. There mm. is, there's no one around. He's really alone. But yet he seemed to have this fulfillment. And not only that, the presence of the saints that would regularly come and visit him. So how, how is that? Is solitude different from loneliness? Do we choose to be alone? Mm. We choose to be alone. We want to be alone with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. St. Anthony, St. Paul, they've done the same thing. They left the mm. world and they stayed there. They had the opportunity mm. to meditate and to talk to the Lord. And we're not talking about one year or two years. We're talking about so many years. Mm. And then we are here to talk about loneliness. The Lord Jesus Christ, according to you, Paul, is filling those gaps. Mm. The Lord Jesus Christ, the only person will be up to meet my needs if I meet, mm. okay? St. Paul, St. Paul stayed in the desert for three and a half years to learn from the Lord, mm. wasn't alone. The Lord was there. So it is about me feeling and me giving the Lord the opportunity to come to my place, to come to my heart, to come to my home, to fill up that space. Yes, and all these people, chose to be alone with yeah. our Lord. Mm. It wasn't something that, I guess, falls upon us. Mm. So mm. Um, it's very, very uh, amazing. And, and I guess one of the things, going back, uh, probably a few steps back, Paul, when we were talking about, um, you know, sitting, sitting by ourselves mm. to reflect on that. But I find a lot of the youth these days, they, they're too scared to sit with themselves. It's always mm. distraction after distraction. We think that there's something wrong with sit with ourselves, but here are these people that are going to be alone. And even Pope Carillus, again, tried to escape from you know, being a bishop, being a pope. Mm. So w what's driving them? Mm. What is making them go to this solitude where they can just be on their own? I think there is a sweetness um, when we meet Christ mm -hmm. that, again, nothing else compares to. And if you've tasted it, you'll know. Um, and it's not filled by a relationship. It's not filled by marriage. Uh, and, and they're craving that. They, want, mm. they just want to be with Christ. And that's what they say. But I think we don't really understand sometimes if we mm. haven't had that experience. We haven't tasted that experience ourselves, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, the, the youth are uh, always, well, all, all adults really, everyone, mm. everywhere, is running away in a sense. Uh, but I think that we need to confront loneliness and not be so afraid of it. Mm. Um, one author I, I, I've been reading recently, he was a Catholic priest, you know, Catholic priests don't marry, so he was quite lonely. Um, and he said, loneliness is like a great chasm 
you know, upon the soul. It's like a deep wound, but out of it, it's, it's so deep and out of it comes treasures and, mm. and, and glory. And when we sit with ourselves and say, yes, you know, I feel loneliness at this moment, um, that need for connection is enough to make me really crave God, right? But if I don't confront it, I'm constantly in a cycle of distraction where I'm convincing myself that other things will fill it. And because mm. nothing does, you go from one thing to the next. Sometimes mm. relationship to the next or experience to the next or video game to the next, whatever it is um, that a person uh, moves between. Um, but to confront it is to actually realize, hang on, none of these things can fill it. So why do mm. I, why should I, you know, try anyway? Yes. And then in that moment of realization, I can call out to God genuinely and say, you're the one that, that I want. You're the one that I've always wanted. And please fill me. Yes. And I think he answers that call. Yes. So beautiful. So beautiful. And I think even in the Bible, and um, we're doing some research, there are so many Bible verses that reflect that God's promise mm. that I am with you. I will never leave you. Yeah. So, Buna, would you like to elaborate on some of those verses that we can cover in the Bible to give us that reassurance? I, I guess maybe I wanted to highlight something. Mm. Love within our Christianity, mm. it is a very important thing, a very important topic. Okay, Love will be against loneliness because mm. if I feel the love from people or I mm. give love to people, that will, you know, wipe off feeling lonely and the lord jesus christ came for us because they loved he loved us yes. mm. okay that's a very important thing and the other thing is open the door and give the opportunity to the lord to come in to your life what about if i think i'm unlovable abuna what about if my past and my life feel so stained and so heavy so burdened um how can i be sure that Christ really just does love me for who I am, where I am, so that I'm strong enough to reach out to him. The Lord Jesus Christ came for those sinners, mm -hmm. came for those weak people, came to treat us and to look after us and give them the opportunity, give the Lord the opportunity to work mm -hmm. within you and to trust the Lord. If we trust the Lord, the Lord will work with us. And what about in our in our church or in our faith? What are some of the remedies that we have to get close to our Lord? And I guess I'm thinking of the ways of maybe even the sacraments, mm. how they help us to draw us closer to our Lord, to give us you know, the peace and the, the confidence that we can be in that connection and keep that connection once we have it. Because I think I've heard people say, I feel like I pray and there's nothing happening. There's no connection. I've prayed mm. for so long. I've asked for so long. So can we talk a bit about those remedies? I guess maybe confession yeah. would be one of the most appropriate stuff, our most appropriate remedies. And after the confession, for sure, repentance and confession, and after that, taking the Holy Communion, that will be connecting you with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, That will keep you close to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ promised us that, uh, fulfilling that promise and one breaking at all. Mm -hmm. But let's start with it. Let's go. And in many occasions, the Lord is there and we don't feel him. Yes. Mm. The Lord is very close to us and he is there. Mm. All we have to do is just give him the opportunity to enter us. The Lord won't come and put pressure on you. No, our Lord is very awesome. He's very kind. He is there and he is giving himself to us mm -hmm. and asking us to open the door to him. And what about feeling that our Lord really is by our side, that he understands the experiences we're going through? Because one of the powerful things about connecting with a person is that you think or you believe that they, they feel, they can sympathise, not sympathise, that's not really a good word, but they can emphasise with you. Um, so how, um, how can we be sure that Christ is really there, mm. that he is really feeling everything we're feeling, that he's experienced this? Yeah. So in Hebrews, St. Paul says, we do not have a high priest that has not been tempted mm -hmm. like us in all things except for sin, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the most remarkable teachings of any faith, that God became man. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing is God bridged the gap. 
you know, so he cares about our loneliness. He, he, we, there was enmity between us and him, there was distance. Mm. And he decided to come to us, which is worth meditating upon for a while. But, <laughs> but to, to, to move on, um, and becoming man, he experienced every single human emotion and thought. He experienced anxiety, you know, he experienced despair when, when he was going to the cross. Um, sweating drops of blood, as I mentioned earlier. Um, he experienced rejection, mm -hmm. you know. There's, there's a beautiful verse, um, I think it's foxes have uh, holes and yeah. birds have nests, but yeah. the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, we all feel like that. Mm -hmm. Like, where's my place in this world? Mm -hmm. Well, he, he not only felt it like us, it's almost as though he felt it more deeply than us. Mm. Yes. You know, because he went into it, he did nothing wrong, mm -hmm. and he experienced humanity to the fullness. Um, so we find in, in the person of Christ, you know, someone who is fully human, fully God, and his humanity is complete. He experienced mm -hmm. everything that we experience. And we can, we can say to him, you know what this is like. Yes. You know, be with me in it. Yes. Yeah. And I, can only, I, I can't even imagine what it would be like, like he had his 12 disciples and how many mm. were with him at the end. So uh, there's so many different things that have happened. Mm. So thank you so much. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much, Buna and Paul, for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you, audience, for all of your all your questions. And we would just like to finish off with a, a beautiful song that's going to be performed by Nora Banoub, accompanied by Fred Curry on acoustic guitar. It's a lovely song called Known, and it's... Um, here for your enjoyment and please don't forget to catch us in a fortnight's time when we'll be covering the topic of anxiety. God bless and good night.
its brightness I'm fully known and loved by you CYC Christian Youth Channel.